in a world where nostalgia rages across the land, where everyone and their mother has a podcast, where there's still a movie trailer guy who says, in a world. Three friends revisit films, shows, and games that molded them as they search for answers to life, the universe, and everything in between. Settle in and join us for Screen Refresh. Welcome back, listeners, to Screen Refresh, a show where we revisit the films, shows, and games from our childhood to try and take another look at what we fell in love with the first time. As always, I'm Dean, and I'm joined by the rest of the Screen Refresh crew, Nick and Tim. Hello there. Also, hello there. Good to be back, and today we'll be talking about what Gene Siskel hailed the worst film of 1991. It is <laughs> At De De Jong's <laughs> Drop Dead Fred. Does anybody know how to pronounce that Dutch <laughs> Dutch name? <laughs> I do At not. De De Jong. If you're Dutch. And after finishing this film, <laughs> I don't want to learn anymore. <laughs> Are we? I, I will. S- Go ahead. I, well, I will say that um, I didn't hate it. I didn't like it. But I also didn't look up any of the trivia afterward. So I guess I can kind of tell you. Yeah, I guess he, I would say he just kind of took it for what it was. Yeah, like okay, that oh, was a movie. Interesting. I didn't want to. I didn't want to turn it off at any point. Like it wasn't that bad, but it wasn't like I was just more. I think I had the most fun watching this entire thing because this was my first experience. I think the most fun <laughs> was bring imagining you guys to this. just imagining Phoebe Cates doing all of this herself and looking <laughs> yeah. at it through the perspective of someone else like oh when like he picks his nose and he wipes it on someone's face like <laughs> that's her doing it but we're seeing it as dropped at fred doing it instead but in reality it's her yeah i think it was sorely missing i have a note here like the fight club tyler durden reveal flashbacks of like what did this what did all these things look like <laughs> yes i felt that uh, was real missing life. through the whole movie yeah, we only got it a couple times. I don't know if you've ever seen or heard of the film Daniel Isn't Real. Um, no. I think Peter Schwarzenegger and um, I forgot the other lead's name. Of a kid sorry, who now that he sorry. is... There's another actor, Schwarzenegger? Yeah. Oh. His son. Any, oh, it's his son. <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> the real small world if it wasn't a relation. <laughs> Uh, sorry to interrupt. So it's his son is how how old is this movie? And then I'll answer my question. Oh, sorry, it's Patrick Schwarzenegger. Okay, that sounds more familiar. Um, <laughs> like, who's Peter? So yeah, so it's it's a movie from 2019. It's the okay. The kid is now slightly grown up, um, and he's in school, and he's still struggling with mental health. And he goes back to I think it's like visit his mother's house or something. And he ends up accidentally letting his imaginary friend loose from this dollhouse that he's been trapped in, in the mother's house. Except it's a horror film, and he makes his life hell, um, and then tries to trap him in a, like, hell dimension, so they switch spots. That somehow seems preferable to Drop Dead Fred. <laughs> well, I mean, I I wouldn't throw out the concept, but is the movie the movie is better than this one? <laughs> not that it's it hard hard to be <laughs> this is the roughest watch i've had on this series so far yeah <laughs> yeah i don't know i i kind of liked it though i i i kind of agree with nick on this i just like there's parts i actually like but overall i would not want to watch this again but if it was on the t te- like if it was on in the background i'd leave it on i would leave that house <laughs> No, it's, it's I certainly it's, not a movie for me. There are like two parts in this film that I genuinely chuckled at. Yeah, um, me, yeah me that too. we'll get to. I mean, was it was it the filmmaking or was it mostly Fred? It's Fred. I think it was okay, mostly Fred. It's Fred. Fred makes the, Maurice look stable. <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, I think they're. At the beginning, they're like two peas in a pod, but Maurice kind of chills out and has humanity at one point. <laughs> no, he doesn't. He he gives a kid fucking apple juice that's actually his piss. 
Right, but then he doesn't do that later. Well, I guess Fred gets humanity too by the end, but it's really written really odd. He's, because he's medicated. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I don't think Maurice was ever trying to genuinely like get Fred Savage locked up in like an insane asylum or like break up his parents' marriage or tear anything apart. I mean, I guess no matter what this movie is showing you, I don't believe it. I just believe this was all just a mental illness self therapy session. I don't think Fred is real. It was about healing her inner child. Yeah. It's it's all Phoebe talking to herself through therapy. Lots of mommy issues and self worth issues are pretty much the core themes of this movie. She did seem to be in like a state of arrested development this entire film for the most part. That it makes it seem like this character would be a better match for Billy in Gremlins. Where both of you are like 30, <laughs> oh, but you right. act like you're like 14. Billy wasn't bad. Well, no, Billy wasn't bad because that's saying that we're acting like 14 year olds because he has the same interests in his like bedroom as we do in ours right now. Well, no, Billy's the fact that his entire friend group were children. Yeah. Well, we don't know. That was <laughs> that was a. I think you're extrapolating from from nothing though, because it's just I don't I don't know. <laughs> you could have been like a big brother from like school, kind of thing, like a program. It was the '80s, so you know. <laughs> but, but there's only two kids in that town, so they got matched up immediately. <laughs> Uh, this movie stars Phoebe Cates. Um, I guess I was inspired to choose this after Gremlins and thinking, oh yeah, Phoebe Cates was in that one movie I kind of remember from my childhood. Fast Times at Ridgemont High. <laughs> no, the other movie that I kind of oh. <laughs> remember from my childhood. Gremlins too. No, the other movie that I kind of <laughs> remember from my childhood. <laughs> Is that it? Are we out of Phoebe Cates off the top of I our head? So. I don't have any others. Okay. Drop Dead Fred. Um, I mean, nineteen. Yeah, Phoebe Cates stars as Elizabeth. She's we see her as a kid, but then most of the movie she's Phoebe Cates uh, dealing with her imaginary friend that's come back to life. Played by here's another one. I assume it's Rick because he's British. Rick Mayall seems like mm-hmm. looking him up, which I didn't really do a lot of just his imdb i guess he's some kind of british comedian because it seems like he has a bunch of yeah, comedy like shows or... of, it was like him and four other characters yeah and kind of like a friends type thing so he his big thing was on black adder because he was in that with rowan atkinson oh that i didn't know yeah that was the only thing i recognized from his um portfolio yeah Supposedly this was originally supposed to be tim burton and robin williams and then they both turned it down <laughs> i'm thankfully thankful robin did because he made hook instead i'm like yeah. which i think he pretty much carries that movie i mean there's good which books. um uh, just a quick thing as we mentioned in our um like the preamble before recording carrie fisher who's also in this movie is a known script doctor and that she would you know she would kind of spruce up whatever script that's giving to her she did that for hook she is an uncredited script doctor for that movie she wasn't even hired she just showed up this one could have used her <laughs> well because it's spielberg and like spielberg and lucas so she has I don't, I don't know the i don't know the behind the scenes on how she did it but that's one of the listings of what she did the very brief unsourced uh imdb trivia says that carrie rewrote her lines for this movie <laughs> Yeah, but it doesn't I'm say she did anything else for the script. <laughs> You're on your own. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to shine in my 16 seconds in this film. She apparently auditioned for Elizabeth. But they're like, we, they wanted to go with a younger, somebody, a younger, anybody actress, not just. That's too bad. Cause knowing what Carrie Fisher ended up becoming and kind of embracing the crazy, this movie is right up her alley. <laughs> It would have been almost, it would have been more depressing though if it's like a character in their like early forties or like late thirties having this breakdown with the imaginary friend. At least this, it's still like they're in their twenties breakdown. That's the normal time for this. This is my favorite IMDb trivia. Just be 
<laughs> the first part is normal, but the last sentence. So the writers wrote part of the uh, wrote the part for Fred, or at least they reworked it for Rick Mayall, who even threw ideas into the script, such as the opening where Elizabeth's mother reads her a bedtime story, and Fred sinking the houseboat. This is the best part. Phoebe Cates also came up with an idea, where in some shots Drop Dead Fred is seen, and in other shots he isn't seen. <laughs> After reading the script, she decided, you know what would be cool? What if he's not in any of the scenes with me? You just imagine it. Oh, man. I just imagine if that's true when the directors are like, oh, yeah, we'll not show him in some stuff. <laughs> like he's imaginary. <laughs> that's just a ridiculous sentence to me. But, um... Also stars Tim Matheson, who is, I don't think he's ever played a nice person ever in any movie, uh, plays her husband, Charles. He's, he's good at what he does. It's just, he's always an asshole. I mean, I, I think I've seen him in, <laughs> now I'm ru- like, I'm <laughs> running through the aisles of my mind palace for Tim Matheson movies. There's a big one that I on the tip of my tongue and I can't remember what, what the one he's in that I was like, oh yeah, Tim Matheson. I recognized him as soon as I saw him, but I couldn't tell you. Now I didn't. Even, I don't even. Know I looked up his other movies, but how do I know he's an asshole? Because the other one I remember him from, he's an asshole, and I can't remember what it is. But uh, I think he plays this this part, you know, well enough for what the script calls. The only other well credited person that I recognized was Ron Elderd as Mickey, uh, Elizabeth's childhood friend that she runs into. In the movie, um, the mother uh, who played Polly was oh, Marsha Mason. Oh, that's right, that's right, Marsha Mason. She looked yeah. familiar, but maybe not. Maybe one other movie. You know, well, a lot of like Neil Simon stuff. I think she might have been married to Neil Simon. Um, but if you've ever seen The Goodbye Girl with Richard Dreyfuss or anything like that, um, sure that has Marsha Mason. Terrific film. Everybody should watch it. Drop Dead Fred. <laughs> no. Take that out. Yeah, she she was <laughs> married to Neil Simon until 1983, in which they divorced. Sorry, Neil. I'm doing live spot like live fact checking. <laughs> live checking. Ron Eldred. Pop up video. <laughs> Ron Eldred is Mickey. I think I mostly recognize him from Black Hawk Down. Did you guys see that? <laughs> Two very yeah. different films. Yeah, yeah. I think he plays the pilot of the titular Black Hawk one of them or the one that goes down i think the somalians like end up like carrying him away i think he they kill him i don't know i vaguely remember i think it was like our social studies teacher in middle school turning that movie on to be like oh we're gonna watch black hawk down and then got like part of the way through and they must have just like lost the spirit to go on because they just shut the movie off before the end of class and we just never finished watching it (laughs) with no explanation (laughs) that i'm like Oh, okay, so we just saw all of you, what you wanted to show us at Black Hawk Down? <laughs> well, it is rated R, and I think they probably showed you, like, all right, here's the, here's here's what we're legally able to show you. <laughs> here's the Black Hawk. Uh, you're not going to see it, but I promise it does go down. Are, are, are teachers guardians? I mean, you just have to be accompanied by a guardian to watch the R-rated movie. Well, like is it even Lord legal, or? then? It's more like a... Private we need permission. Rule, I, I think it's less. Yeah. It's 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 less about the actual legality of it, and more so just if the parents Having find parents out, they're going to be pissed. Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. This movie came out on May twenty fourth, ninety one. Opened against Thelma and Louise and Backdraft. Ouch. And Hudson Hawk. Yeah, Hudson Hawk didn't make a less lot of money, ouch. but yeah, less ouch. <laughs> uh, the week prior saw What About Bob which I think it was a good comedy that I haven't seen since I was a kid. And also the Mannequin sequel, Mannequin 2 on the move. Wait, the Mannequin 2? I thought it was like one of those unnamed third sequels or something. No, it's like s- Mannequin Stone Age. Or no, something. yeah, Mannequin 2 on the move starring the guy from Fright Night. I forget his name. The main actor from Fright Night. Oh, 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 yes. The yes, kid. Yes. So that's what was out and about around that time. Just one little point about the writers they didn't really do anything outside of this movie (laughs) 
they didn't really do anything inside this movie. Yeah. <laughs> they just told the main actor to just go nuts. <laughs> and unfortunately, Rick kind of did. <laughs> I actually, I would defend Rick as like, I'm not saying I loved him as Fred, but I'm like, I mean, what else would, should he have done? Like, with, well, in yeah, movie? I don't think it's, I don't think it's him or like any of the acting. I think it's just generally the character itself <laughs> yeah. that they've asked him to play is obnoxious. <laughs> it was clear and though like, he enjoyed point. himself. He enjoyed he, himself. He, he doing definitely this did. Thing. He had fun making yeah. this movie. That's for sure. Yeah. Um, I mean, that's a that's about all I can say about this movie to start it off so thank you for joining us and <laughs> that's all i can say <laughs> trying to go for very short efficient episodes for it this wasn't season yeah that, no you just hated this movie and you don't want to talk about it it wasn't <laughs> no he bad. wants to he took notes and he wants to i have four pages of notes yeah, oh. yeah we got it we've got to talk about certain parts of this movie um the opening well i guess while i get it it's just a weird i i think it's well done but it seems out of place just like cartoon or uh, crayon kids drawing. I mean, I think it kind of makes sense. It just makes as... sense, but it's like zany. It seems like it's a kids movie opening, but this movie is slightly above. Like we're going to get kids. like Problem Child or Home Alone. Yeah. Yeah. Or... It has like Prehysteria soundtrack and then, yeah. know, I don't know. It was the most 80s soundtrack with whimsical flair I could possibly <laughs> ask for. Yeah. <laughs> for a 1991 film. <laughs> yeah. Like I like the style of it. Like it, it, it is, and on one hand, it made sense. On the other hand, I don't think we really saw any drawings at all throughout the movie. So, just an interesting. Well, at choice. one point later on, she was doing pictures and things like that. Mm-hmm. But they yeah, she she wrote show. her she wrote a letter as a kid. It's true. She used crayons to write a letter. Okay. Well, I've changed my mind. It's the perfect opening. <laughs> I'm glad we can bring you around on these <laughs> animated opening credits. Uh, so the first scene, we get a, a young Elizabeth being read a bedtime story by her mother, Polly. And she's just kind of ending the story saying, you know, and the princess ran off with the prince. And <laughs> Elizabeth's like, how do you know that they lived? She didn't say this, but she's like, how do you know they lived happily ever after? Because... She was a good little girl. If she had been naughty, the prince would have run away. What a pile of shit. I understand the the comedic trying to make, open the movie with that, but it really, actually in a storytelling sense, I'm like, that doesn't really set up her character for the rest of the movie. I thought it did. Well, it seems like she's more, I don't know, like savvy and abrasive in that. Yeah, and then afterwards, it's like no, she's still like a precocious young kid. I mean, unless she's, it's Fred feeding her lines. When, yeah, <laughs> I took it as like when she was younger, she was like that rambunctious, like you know Rick Sanchez Jr. running around with like she'll say whatever she wants, and then in adulthood, <laughs> she's just an empty shell until she finally meets with Fred once again. I, it's like it's almost like she just takes to that line and that's her life like don't please the man and he won't run away because yeah. we find out we realize her husband is divorcing her or they've had <laughs> her, her pro- husband is getting divorced <laughs> from her <laughs> from someone else. <laughs> the uh our good old asshole tim matheson how old was he supposed to be anyway her husband like she seems Based he on the flash for forward of like 21 years and her age, she's like 25 or 26 now. He just looks perpetually 40. I don't know. Well, everyone in the 80s and 90s, they, they have that look about them that <laughs> I really have no idea how Except for Phoebe. old they are. Like it, it, like watching Home Alone to know that um, Catherine O'Hara is like 36 in that movie. I'm like, I'm 35. So that means she's only a year <laughs> older than me at that point in time. Right. Like that blows my fucking mind yeah so seeing adults back then it's like i can't place their ages i really can't because they look like they're way older than what they really are it's the hairstyles for a lot of them and the shoulder pads yeah because the um like later on not to skip but when when she cuts her hair out of like oops 
but as an adult, I'm like, I'm looking at him like, that's a modern hairstyle right now. She's literally ahead of her time. It's, it's the one point where I'm like, Fred, you did a good job. She looks great. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about um, that. I mean, I say uh, when kids are going to love it. When it's fixed up, <laughs> it, uh, it looks pretty good. Well, it's little bob. also, it's weird because like Tim Matheson seems like Charles seems older than her in this. And then when they do those other flashbacks of she's like remembering her time with him of like, don't go to work. And she's like putting her hands over his eyes and she's like helping him shave. And it's like, this sets up a really weird dynamic here because now it makes you seem even farther apart. That it's like, oh, it's clear she did not have a father figure in this film. So, yeah, we flash forward 21 years from this uh, bedtime story. Uh, and Elizabeth has the the worst day ever uh pretty much <laughs> the um, <old> one too <laughs> she is headed to the jaguar dealership to speak to her husband charles and it seems like she's trying to forgive him and i guess we're assuming that he had cheated on her that becomes apparent and it, <laughs> and that that's the red flag in the movie she wants to apologize because he cheated on her. right <laughs> Yeah, so the that whole line at the beginning where the princess was good, so the prince didn't run away. Or the princess didn't, you know, was a good girl. So that's what, that's kind of seems like that's become her philosophy is be a, uh, whatever, to just don't make the prince run away. Like, the self-worth, like, was shot from the beginning. <laughs> Thanks to mom. Well, the rest of that scene was, what a pile of shit. Or is it? <laughs> Drop that Fred's like, you know, she's makes a good point. <laughs> I'm making a lot of good points here. <laughs> As he's like rubbing bookers on her. <laughs> <laughs> it's interesting that uh, Charles sells Jaguars, but Elizabeth drives like an old Gremlin or something. Or I don't know what that car was. But it was like <laughs> well, a- of course, Phoebe Cates would have a Gremlin. <laughs> <gasps> I just realized. Was that, was that a... Uh, kind of a weird nod <laughs> that was a gremlin right it looked like it might it might not have been but it was the same style like a little subcompact boxy sedan I, I don't think i can pick one out of a lineup the only <laughs> gremlin i remember is in the uh, treehouse of horror episode when bart is on the bus and he's like there's a gremlin on the side of the bus and Otto looks to the left and it's the old guy with glasses driving his car and he's like oh, i'll take care of him and runs him <laughs> off the road <laughs> She stops to make a phone call, and while she's making a phone call, somebody walks by on the street, takes out a hammer, smashes her window, yeah. and takes her purse. Then another guy walks by and sees the smashed window and steals the car. How many thieves just happen to be walking around that city at the same time, in the middle of the day, <laughs> broad daylight? When were the uh, LA riots? <laughs> Where does it take place anyway? Is it LA? Probably San Francisco, maybe I don't know. Um, <laughs> yeah, but first of all, the first guy that that smashes the window to steal her purse, just the most unassuming. He's got like a dumpy old suit on and a, a wacky tie. Like he's a he's a guy that's I mean, unless that's his whole plan is to look not like a petty thief. <laughs> <laughs> he just he just looks like he got out from the courthouse where she works as a stenographer worked as worked he looks like he was like the public defendant and <laughs> maybe he was and he just he, just, he needs some money because <laughs> they don't get paid well i guess well that case didn't go well <laughs> <laughs> yeah while she's on the phone calling janie who we later realize is carrie fisher Janny, 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 um Janie. yeah her car gets broken into and stolen in the matter of two minutes uh, so that's how her day is going. She gets back. She goes to the court where we realize uh, she's apologizing and she gets in to the judge like. I'm so sorry, Your Honor. I lost my money, my car, my husband. All in one lunch hour. Yeah. Hey, do what I did. Plead insanity. <laughs> <laughs> But just, I laughed at just how brave, like he's saying it out loud, like in front of the judge, like it's, that's not going to affect anything. Like it's a pro tip. (laughs) (laughs) 
I assume the judge just hacked? went case dismissed right after he heard the. <laughs> yeah, but she's. We realize she's that's it's that's what it's called, right? Stenographer. They they yeah. take the court, everything that's yeah. said, mm-hmm. and they can read it back and the the transcript reporter. essentially. Yeah, we realize that's her job, and I guess what's her job? Judge, yeah, fires her for being late. I don't know yeah. how late. She's like, I'm Ouch. sorry, and he's like, Yeah, me too. You're fired. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's kind of a dickhead. Hit the bricks. This is the worst day of all time. This is like the beginning to falling down. <laughs> <laughs> except she gets an imaginary friend instead of a gun yeah i mean w- imagine he was a little more murderous than just kind of gross gross pranky <laughs> fred shows back up and she's like but we're older now we're grown up he's like okay instead of dolls and he gives her like a knife <laughs> is that a luger <laughs> how um, long have you had this fred <laughs> Your mother keeps a revolver in the nightstand upstairs. <laughs> in her boot. Uh, in heels? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so Elizabeth is leaving after just being fired. And in the at the courthouse, I'm pretty sure, she runs into Mickey, played by that guy I said in Black Hawk Down. Ron Eldred, Mickey, um, and we realize they're catching, they catch up because they grew up together uh, before she moved away, but they do stuff. Oh, <laughs> what? Mickey, uh... I, I scrolled past my notes on it and then see where I was. This is where we kind of realize who Drop Dead Fred is because Mickey's like, don't you remember what you did to my grandmother? I didn't do anything to your grandmother. You said the same thing back then. You said that Fred did it. Drop dead Fred. (laughs) And then she's like, oh yeah, drop dead Fred. And we get a flashback of just an old woman in the kitchen and yellow paint is thrown from off screen and she's covered in yellow paint. Just as I got an actual laugh out loud for me because it's just (laughs) like, what the fuck? (laughs) Not expecting a little, and I'm imagining like a five year old girl, just the one dumping an entire gallon of yellow paint in this be- a very specific <laughs> shade of yellow. Like, why would you have that much on hand? Uh, she says, like, Elizabeth says she was like reacting to like her mother being mean, and Mickey's like, Yeah, we all remember, we were all afraid of your mother. He was so real, Mickey. Oh, he was real, all right. He was like really out of control. No, not always. Only when my mother was, well, you know. Hey, we were all a little afraid of your mother. So this kind of sets up her mother as like a menacing figure, which I don't, which I don't think pans out. But yeah, like we'll find over time that it's like <laughs> her mother is a saint yeah. to not be like, I'm putting you up for adoption. I'm sorry. This goes back to what Nick said, I think maybe about little monsters or something at some point. But just like you sympathize with the shit that the dad deals with, like, like this is not a reasonable. Yeah unreasonable reactions for like the kind of behavior that is going on yeah it's like i'm late for work and there's just like sandwich or whatever in the cupboards <laughs> bike outside it. actually i actually kind of want to contest that but this is a case of like the chicken or the egg coming first because i felt her mother was like no wonder why you're crazy because with a mother and upbringing like that, I would be too. But at the same time, I don't know which might have started first. I would say you know, the, the child behavior or the, her responding to it. I would say it's it's not apparent until the end of the movie, like the very last scene with the mom. I'm like, oh wait, you were you were admitting to be being very shitty. But up until that point, I don't know if they really sell it as well as like the mother was driven crazy or the mother made her like this. Well, even the mother's reactions to the things that she did wasn't like, I'm going to beat you for making that mud pie. It's like, oh, boy, <laughs> oh, geez. you need to get rid of Fred. Oh, jeez. <laughs> I like how the fat fo- like, why is nobody mad at the father in this film that yeah. the mother stays? And the yeah. father's like, I disagree with you. You shouldn't do that to her of trying to take away your imaginary friend. Well, what do you know about parenting? I guess nothing. <laughs> it just leaves the family. 
His ego was that hurt. Somebody Just needs to defend line. our daughter. Not me, though. Bye. <laughs> Good luck, honey. Oh, that's a shame. Man, that kid deserves better. <laughs> See you later. I wish I was better, but I'm not. <laughs> so, after running into Mickey at the courthouse, a random Carrie Fisher appears. You think you could talk your way out of this? You betrayed me. You're not going to get away from me this time. I choose you, complain about husband. Um... <laughs> Uh, so Janie These gens is, are getting way out of hand. <laughs> <laughs> Janie is obviously on the side of... So, Elizabeth's distraught about losing her job, but more so about her husband uh, and that being uncertain in their future. And Janie is squarely on the side of, like, you know, he's a shithead, you don't need him. And trying to give her positive affirmations, breathing exercises, get her over Charles... Carrie Fisher really had that locked down as, like, the sensible good friend in a lot of the... Like, when Harry met Sally. Yeah, so after we see her and Carrie, they they kind of continue the scene back at Elizabeth's apartment where Mom shows up because she's heard about... I guess she's... Elizabeth probably talked to her. Charles has probably called her and talked to her, told her what was going the, on. The flashbacks we get... How is it that Phoebe Cates goes from being a child to being like 22 years later or whatever it is, and Marsha Mason has not aged a day? (laughs) I mean, mom shows up. Yeah, she's looking not much different than she did in the uh, opening bedtime story. And you pretty much get the sense that she uh, runs the show and Phoebe is still afraid of her. Elizabeth, I've packed your things. You're coming home with me. No, I'm staying here tonight, Mother. Don't disagree with your mother, dear. It just cuts in their back at uh, Polly's house, her mom's house, her childhood home. We get a little, don't go in the living room. I just had the carpet shampooed, which is, I was like, oh yeah, that's going to get fucked up at some point. Which also, it's like, if you just got it shampooed, then do you just intend to never go back in that room? <laughs> It's not like it needs a certain amount of time unless it's like they just got shampooed and it's still wet. What do you know about shampooing carpets, Tim? Tell me all about it. We used to shampoo a lot of carpets at our house. (laughs) Because you would walk in dog shit and like smear it everywhere? (laughs) (laughs) Because we wanted to make it look as nice as possible when I wore holes in it from rock band drums. (laughs) (laughs) That's just one spot at the carpet, though. Yeah. Um, Polly takes her up to her old room, which I assume just hasn't been touched since she left. Because it's pink as fuck. Uh, And looks like a little girl's room. Except it's kind of bare. So, I don't know. Maybe that speaks to the strict nature her mom had on her. Like, not letting her do anything cool to her room. But it's just kind of looks like a pink hotel room. But uh, she finds an old jack-in-the-box in her closet that has been taped up. And it looks like it came from childhood. It's very old. This scared the shit out of me. Covered in mud. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we cut to later on. Elizabeth is like crying herself to sleep. It's like, Jesus. Um, but I guess she has a reason. I mean, with the way her life is right now. I was like, okay, I get it. Yeah, this is this is like horror movie stuff in some of this here. Like, you oh, change yeah. the music, and this is a very different movie for most of these scenes. No, I 100% agree. Like, I played Phasmophobia, but there ain't no way I'd stay in that room if the <laughs> Jack in the Box just started like that. I mean, like, you know that scene in Elf where Will Ferrell's testing all of the different Jack in the Boxes, and he, he, he jumps every time? <laughs> That's 100% me. I will call out a jump scare a mile away every single time, hooked up to, like, the the cardiac thing with you can see the heartbeat it'll always be the same nothing will move but a jack-in-the-box it's just gonna be like all over the place (laughs) hate jack-in-the-boxes then once he gets out and then it's like she's laying in bed and you see like the hand come out from under the pillow and like tap her on the head that's what i was gonna say that for some reason it i don't know why this is they did it like this but it she's crying in bed and then it flashes back cuts and she's young again 
and she looks up at her ceiling light and it turns on. And then you see, yeah, Fred's hand come from out behind the pillow, which is very freaky. Yeah. <laughs> Slaps her on the head. And I just imagine, like, what if it's, <laughs> what if it just started choking her? <laughs> <laughs> That's then kind of all what the it was other like. Hands start coming out. <laughs> That's kind of what it was setting it up to be. Yeah, it's a weird. It's like, is this scary? Is it? I don't know why they had to do that though. Like, because it just flashes back to the present, and then the Jack in the Box, as Nick mentioned, creepily, it starts to, the handle starts to turn by itself and starts, you know, going very fast. very not phased by this like oh that's interesting (laughs) (laughs) yeah i'm always interested in the surprised by those reactions of movies i'm like anybody else would be like scared shitless at what was going on right there does she go and touch it i think it just just pops open and you see this little green egg pop out and bounce around the room it was very leprechaun (laughs) yeah but he also just wears green the whole movie, so. <laughs> Leprechaun's older brother. Yeah, Fred kind of jump scares himself into existence. Uh, he's just full on there. Like he, I mean, once he reappears, it's like Maurice when we first see him. He's just, he's on. Like he's just going. He calls her snot face affectionately. Ah, <laughs> my snot face! Yeah, what happened to you? Look at you. You're all older. You're even uglier. Ugh. I'm sorry, I'm going to have to be sick all over you immediately. Lie down. Well, to lower her self-esteem and prepare her <laughs> for life. Right. Good thing she had an imaginary friend to help her with the troubles she received from her mother. <laughs> but Fred is just back in full force like, let's let's do all the old shit we, we used to do. Of course, this is just the personification of all of Elizabeth's self-doubt schizophrenia schizophrenia (laughs) it's got real like a caveman's (laughs) valentine approach to this thing (laughs) she almost like it's like she just immediately regresses when she comes into the house you know i I guess probably just being in the house has something to do with it too she's under mom's care she's just right back to where she was as a kid he's like yeah he's like british so fred is like a british maurice I can see why this role was offered to Robin Williams. <laughs> oh, like, yeah. I can imagine Robin Williams doing this. I mean... kind of wish he did. I can't imagine him accepting this role. I can imagine him doing it, though. <laughs> How it would be. I mean, it would be like Jack. You remember the movie Jack? Was he, like, manic in that one? No. He oh, was I guess, but he was tame. a kid. Yes, right. Yeah, 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 yeah. I thought he was a little tamer than what he has been in others because it's a kids centric movie so he reigned back on a lot of his style of humor because he's a lot raunchier than we than we remember <laughs> yeah oh yeah yeah he's pretty filthy but yeah this could have been this also could have been michael keaton as beetlejuice <laughs> it's all uh, maurice beetlejuice and F- drop dead fred all exist in this uh... yahoo serious <laughs> right <laughs> Um, they all exist in this. I don't know. <laughs> the zany, worst Avengers. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, Fred wants to get up to his uh, old ways. Uh, takes. I think he just he goes downstairs. Elizabeth Elizabeth follows. He sees the, the carpet, the "Do Not Walk on Carpet" sign in the living room, and just immediately runs outside, finds dog shit. <laughs> he comes in the in the front door on his hands because he realized he didn't want he didn't want to track it anywhere the dog shit anywhere else but on the carpet. He does like a spring onto the carpet and just starts <laughs> dancing and rubbing dog shit all over it. And into the chair. I couldn't help but think of Dave Chappelle in the Charlie yes. Mur- Charlie Murphy story <laughs> where he's rubbing dirt into Eddie's couch. Fuck your couch. <laughs> Fuck your couch. <laughs> Um, but this, and this is where I wrote down and what Nick was saying earlier, like, if we look back on this, like, how was Elizabeth doing this? Like, not as Fred, but as Elizabeth, 
like in real life. Did you- I really, I really wish they had more cuts of that <laughs> to really accentuate like. Because the, the thing is, is through the movie, there are many times where he is strictly an imaginary friend, but then others, he does toe the line of supernatural and he is the one doing it because from the camera's perspective, she's like across the room. So he starts like manipulating certain things when she can't physically do it. So it makes you wonder, like, is he really, really there or is it just it's her yeah. and she's going crazy? Is she imagining herself outside her body on the other side of the room? Like, yeah. if her mother comes downstairs, does she just see her standing there like stock skill, eyes rolled into the back of her head, <laughs> <laughs> just as all of this happens in front of her on that <laughs> carpet? Could have, could have made the movie a little more, even a little more interesting if, if we if they explored something like that. <laughs> Full cheese, drop dead for it. <laughs> <laughs> so, she wakes up from this. Was it all a dream? Was it? She comes downstairs and realizes her mother is cleaning the shit. Has cleaned the, mostly cleaned the living room of shit. Um, and that it was, it really happened in, in some way. And her mom, like, again, she's like lightly distressed by this. Like, this is your do- adult daughter tracking dog shit all over your living room. Honestly, Elizabeth, you're not even back for a day and you're behaving like a five-year-old. She's become so desensitized (laughs) to all of this. Oh, man, this is... My day is just slightly inconvenienced by this. She did a really good job, though, because I didn't see... Beyond... Obviously, beyond what the spot she was cleaning, it looked like the, the room was still spotless. So either there wasn't as much dog shit in real life, or I don't know how she got out of the chair. I want her. I need her secrets. She should put up a bigger sign next time. <laughs> I think the film had to cut some swears out of this um, because Fred sees mom and is like, "Oh my god, is it? It is the mega bitch!" But then. I think he says Mega Bitch a couple more times, but then the rest of the movie, it's changed to Mega Beast, and I wonder if it was dubbed over that they way. Hit their, they hit their quota. <laughs> it's like, you, like can oh. either, you can either say bitch four more times in the movie, or you can have three more nose-picking scenes. <laughs> <laughs> and the script writers were just like, damn, you put us in like between a rock and a hard place. Real Sophie's choice here. Gotta have that nose-picking. <laughs> Never have I seen as much nose picking in a movie as this one. Get Rick back on the line. We need ADR. <laughs> oh man! Take out these, take out these bitches. Mega beast. Mom opens the fridge. Fred sticks his head in. She shuts the door on his head, and he struggles to get it out. And that the shot of him pulling and his neck is like stretched to like two or three feet long. It was just really unsettling looking to me. Yeah, um, it wasn't a bad prosthetic. So he yanks his head out and his face has become like Hey Arnold or Alfred E. Newman shaped. This, do you think this is where Seth MacFarlane got the idea for Stewie? Because <laughs> <laughs> it's a spitting image. He's British too. It ends up being very like Big Trouble Little China when what's his name blows up at the end. Oh yeah. Yeah, the electric guy. Yeah, it's not the best prosthetic. It's not horrible. It's very, it's, it is unsettling. It, very unsettling. <laughs> like most of the movie. It does not look like it belongs in this. No, no. It looks like late 80s, early 90s, like a horror prosthetic. But I think I think their idea was to like, let's smack them with as much Fred and weird shit as we can right off the top. Let's numb them. And then we got them. And then we can do whatever we want for the rest <laughs> of the movie. Whether that worked or not, your mileage may vary. Got him hooked, reel him in. Oh, there's nothing <laughs> online? Okay. So they're back in Elizabeth's bedroom, and Fred, we realize Fred's motive, he says, is... I'm stuck, because your stupid, ugly, fat, grown-up husband has left you. So you're all alone, and you're all unhappy. So I have to come back, and I can't get home again until you're happy. So why don't you get happy? <laughs> Which is pretty much just directly saying, like, I am the personification of your <laughs> mental troubles right now. <laughs> I thought, again, no matter what you think of the character, I thought he is just like a large, 
obnoxious child, which I think he does well. It's not doesn't always land. I mean, most of it doesn't land, but there are there are moments in the movie where the way he says things or the situations make me chuckle. But it's few and far between. There were a lot of moments where it was it was funny. There were an equally amount of moments where it was cringe. Yeah. Or I was uncomfortable. <laughs> but there were a few moments where it did make me laugh out loud or just like the audacity or just like <laughs> <laughs> like wow you guys actually went for it and it's just like funny to see it's more pure shock value <laughs> they do have a little i do i like the way he gets angry <laughs> quickly here when have you ever helped me all the time that's what i do that's what i'm afraid i help you you've never helped me Fred. excuse me yes i have did not did so I did. I did. Yes, I did. I did. I did. I did. I did. I did. Yes, I did. And then he hits her. Right, that's it. I hate you. Oh, God. And he uppercuts her into the fountain. Like a rock'em sock'em robot. Says flawless victory. Just need to do it twice, too. Just be shit It's not like playful hitting either. It's like he wails on her for a second even just one hit just looks harder than she's unconscious i think he really hit her <laughs> he just takes that seriously and personally but like a child would i don't know that's, that's what made me think like oh i think he actually is personifying this pretty well so it pisses him off enough to where he runs out and says he's just gonna die <laughs> so he stands in front of a very old timey looking fire truck coming down the road i know this is like 91 but that fire truck just seemed like it was from 60 or 50 or something i don't know it was also imaginary oh, i guess i <laughs> guess was it i thought the truck was real but him getting anyway the the real or not real truck plows him down you can actually see his feet like like his body dragging stuck to the front of the truck as like <laughs> the shot by his shoes stays there you see his legs like dragging on the ground <laughs> As the truck drives away. Just scraping his head along the pavement. It's like deep red. <laughs> it's just like, uh, if you watch the boys, it's how um, A-Train kill, kills kill that one guy. Me. Yeah. <laughs> they just show that. <laughs> but they still use that same prosthetic from the fridge. <laughs> um, yeah, he gets hit out of his red boots. Also, listener, he's wearing like like an obnoxious like green yeah he does look like a leprechaun he's got a green yeah it's like a lime jacket. green he looks like the guy who does the the whatever that oh you remember the 90s money info commercials or whatever it was <laughs> matt matthew, not, matthew. <laughs> the guy with like the crazy green yeah. suits it's free um with the question marks on him yeah um <laughs> it does it is a riddler <laughs> Cape, Batman, riddle me this. Doing what you want to do in life is like being on vacation every single day. Now here's your chance to get the government to pay for it. That's the way his warped mind works. And put it right here in one book. He's obsessed. The call is free. (laughs) That's perfect. (laughs) Um, I I do like his costume for his character. He's got red hair. I think I think it's natural. It looks like it's natural. Bright green suit, red shoes. Um, yeah, we don't really talk about his costume, but it looks he looks like a child's imaginary friend. And I think they did a good job with that. The acting was phenomenal. The set design costumes were incredibly well done. <laughs> the acting was very well done. The acting was, or the script was not. No. Yeah, the, the directing and the, the script, I mean, it starts with the script, even a good director can't save. It's hard to save a bad script, but um, yeah, yeah. But the truck hits him and it leaves his shoes. And since his shoes came off, that means he's dead. That's official. When the shoes come off, you're dead <laughs> in a car accident. Uh, she sees him get smacked by the fire truck. Then she just flash flashes back. Here we're treated to a flashback. Um, Elizabeth is young, and Fred is waking her up in the middle of the night to burgle their own house uh quote-unquote stealing just possessions 
which really just means they go around the house like making a mess, breaking things, a really expensive pot Elizabeth drops on purpose. And this is intercut with her parents waking up thinking there's a burglar because why wouldn't you? It sounds like things are breaking downstairs. This is, this is our first look at Nigel too, her dad. We haven't seen her dad up until this point. Nigel calls the police. At no point do they decide, oh, we have a daughter we should check on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Your first destination should be her bedroom to make sure she's okay. Yeah. She's not a decoy. <laughs> So they never do that. They only make it to the hallway stairs where the police are coming up the stairs and Nigel well, I like how the police arrive and they're like, kick the door in. And he kicks it, but like the bottom of the door where his foot goes just goes clean through the door. It's like a hollow core. <laughs> ah, shit. Maybe Fred knew their home security was terrible and he did this purposely to bring awareness to it. Maybe, yeah. You don't want a hollow core front door to your home. It cuts after this and there's like an ADT sign in the front. <laughs> Goddamn product placement. Fred's like, your dad should buy a gun. <laughs> Take mine. Nigel jumps on the policeman coming up the stairs thinking it's the intruder. Um, pretty good. Suicide by cop. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Isn't it sad as my first thought is like, man, the other cop would have just started shooting immediately <laughs> um they they roll down the stairs they come out of the he's nigel comes out of the house in handcuffs the police are taking him away we assume mom never they never find out that it was actually the daughter because they never saw her never checked on her never, never. Checked. i don't remember what purpose this really serves other than to just give some we see the dad and just see yeah fred i did some i looked shit. at it like, this is the catalyst for why he leaves. Well, the only thing is later on, his argument on why he leaves isn't because of what she's doing. It's he disagree. He Yeah, it doesn't parent. It's like on well. board with the daughter and disagrees with how the mother is trying to get rid of drop dead Fred. Yeah. It's like, I know, so your I know answer what the is movie, you leave? No, I know what the movie is giving me. I'm trying to fill in blanks that don't exist to justify <laughs> why they did certain things. Yeah, why they should. You're 100% this. right. But I feel like this needs some salvaging as to why this scene even exists. He had a lot of time to think in prison. <laughs> on one hand, it comes, it comes back to like, is the mom causing this or is she just acting out? They just, they're showing you what she did as a child but it just it, it's presented in an odd way just yeah just here's a random flashback just to show you i don't know maybe there's a line that connects it to why this happens after fred gets hit by a truck but in any case we flash back she's standing there post truck running over fred and he's just gone her mom takes over and is like we're going to make you over with cruelty free makeup there's like a mini montage. <laughs> I don't know why that's like a a point that she has to make. I guess that's good. Great. Cruel, great mom. That's a great quality. Cruelty free makeup. It's to show that the mother isn't the evil one. <laughs> right. <laughs> no, she's just a narcissistic one because after the makeover, she's literally dressed up exactly like <laughs> yeah, her mother. Same hair. Same hair. Same outfit. Mom is trying to make her the spitting image of herself. Uh, they get home and find a note written. Supposedly. <laughs> we know who you are. We know what you are. <laughs> Kill yourself. Oh, sorry, wrong house. <laughs> oh, man. Elizabeth reads the note and it's supposedly an apology note or a I want you back note from her husband, Charles. We get like a little montage of He's like, oh, I love the way you hug me in the morning before I work and help me shave. And she cuts him. She does nick him <laughs> while she's shaving, shaving his face. Th these moments come up later on as a contrast to the reality of living with Charles, but that's later. But in her mind, she's like, oh, we're going to get to do all these, you know, Charles wants me back. Mom looks kind of disappointed because it's like, oh, our time is over. Um charles wants her back so she just goes right Sands to the, in the hourglass <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> she could have she looks like she could have been on that show her mom <laughs> mason what's her name or 
uh, Marsha Mason. Marsha Mason. We cut. We're back at uh, Elizabeth and Charles's apartment or condo, and Charles isn't there. And Fred appears again, and he reveals just one little problem. Charles isn't coming. What do you mean? I wrote the note. <laughs> <laughs> this is like a fucked up thing he says. <laughs> He reveals he wrote the note as a prank, and he's just dancing around like, Haven't got a husband! Haven't got a husband! <laughs> what if he then reveals that not only did he write the note, Charles never existed, it's been him the entire time? <laughs> it could be by the very end of the movie, which there's a weird thing. We'll touch on that later. Um, yeah, maybe maybe, <laughs> maybe that yep. maybe that was... Uh, yeah, that, that's definitely a possibility. Charles never existed. But he, a.k.a. Elizabeth, wrote that note as a prank to her. Charles, a.k.a. Fred, a.k.a. Elizabeth. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. She's everything. So that, wait, so that means, hold up. So if we're going back by this idea that whenever these things are happening, it's her doing it. So that means she wrote the note. Fine tricked herself into going to that apartment but then that means she's dancing around the apartment <laughs> ridiculing uh-huh. her <laughs> i mean i guess lots of it too is like she's imagining that happening and without actually saying those words but <laughs> it's just sitting there eyes rolled back still listen we don't have yeah we don't have the rules of our <laughs> theory worked out yet it's a work in progress uh don't feed her after midnight <laughs> <laughs> Um, so yeah, she's like pretty de- sad after realizing this note from her husband was not real. Um, she cries. She says she loves Charles for some reason, I guess because she doesn't have self-esteem. Fred offers to, they, they find this, I don't know why he has, Charles has this poster for a party, like a flyer. It's like a movie sheet it poster. Was, yeah. I think it was like a wine tasting night event yeah, he was a going to be party. doing. But I don't know why he has a movie sheet size poster of about yeah, like party a one his... sheet for his own party. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> We're gonna plaster these around town. See, <laughs> Fred offers to be her date, which she turns down. First sensible thing she's done. <laughs> I d- I laughed at this weird just aspect. It cuts to later. She's sleeping. She assumes Fred is still there, and sneaks out of her apartment trying to get away from fred and he's sleeping upside down like a bat like with his arms crossed i don't know I <laughs> like thought michael that was... keaton out of batman <laughs> yeah i don't know i thought that was that was a funny shot he's just randomly sleeping upside down we see his true form <laughs> through the whole movie there was not a single point where i i anticipated what fred was going to do and it, he's like, he is the intrusive thought that just is always <laughs> acting out. And That's I did a, enjoy some of his like antics because yeah. of that. It's just no. never, there's not a single point where I'm like, oh yeah. Her walking out and seeing him hanging upside down, like I wasn't expecting to see that. The last <laughs> time I saw that was Batman 89 and I never saw it since. <laughs> yeah, I, I agree with you there. There's, there's, there's stuff he does that I think is funny. It's just the film doesn't come together as a whole. Mm. she sneaks out and she's sneaking out to go to carrie fisher's boathouse it's a river condominium she's confessing like hey i i'm seeing an imaginary friend from my childhood i'm seeing somebody oh (laughs) and it gets worse (laughs) uh carrie or janie has her monthly visitor (laughs) then it's not what you think (laughs) Oh, okay, well. (laughs) Um, Elizabeth is kind of insinuating, like, I don't want to stay at my place. My imaginary friend is there. Uh, Can I stay somewhere? Can I stay here is kind of what she's insinuating. What a line. (laughs) Wait, what? What a line. Oh, That she uses that all the time. Yeah. Hey, can I sleep with you tonight? My imaginary (laughs) friend's back at my place. I hear you knocking, but you can't come in. Murray is in there. No, you can't. Murray is here one night a month. You had to pick tonight. Janie apparently has uh, a man over who only visits once a, once a month, and that's all we get out of it. He, like, calls down to Janie, like, are you coming back to bed? 
He goes all night, I guess. Good for him. Well, he's an animal. He's an animal. <laughs> it's literally. He also an looks animal. like he's in his fifties. I'm sorry, it's like sixties. He's definitely <laughs> yeah. not in his fifties. Well, I like how she's like. He's such an animal. You mean he goes all night? No. What do you think I mean? He shits in the corner. He eats with his paws. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's a good line. That's I. I that's got to be her addition to the script, I'd imagine. Yeah. Hundred percent. So she relents and lets Phoebe, uh, Elizabeth, stay there, and I guess her sex capades end for the night. In the morning, Murray has a weird line. Murray is the, the guy who Janie has been screwing that night. Like he overhears talking about drop dead Fred and an imaginary friend, and he's like, "Am I missing something? Is this like a girl thing? <laughs> like how out of touch of are you with like what women do?" He's like, I've never had an imaginary friend. Just wet dreams. <laughs> Thanks, Mur. Yes, girls give themselves weird... Oh, that's right. While she slept, Fred supposedly cut her hair. Like, chopped it on one side, and it was, so it was uneven. So we got, like, a short bob on one side and her mother's hair on the other. It looked good. With the lopsided that was, that one? Was, I don't know. Yeah, the, the that short was bob the modern was. life. Yeah, that's the mod. No, when it was lopsided, that's like a modern trend. But hers was. I know what you mean, but it it was weird looking. I thought. Well, I mean, he used like paper scissors when you're not supposed to use that <laughs> to cut hair, but it was just kind of like starkly different from one side to the next. Instead of like a, it's like a gradual or shade the side of the head and part it over. It was the first good thing he's done this movie. <laughs> it's yeah. a cue Michelangelo. She's a babe. <laughs> I love the completely short Bob. I thought she looked great with that. But yeah, that's that that happened while she slept at in the houseboat. It's a river condominium. So Janie goes to work at the courthouse. I guess she's a she's a lawyer. She had something to do with law. I think she was a lawyer. Something that she can own a boat condominium. It's a river condominium. Elizabeth's just putzing around the boat. She looks out and she thinks she sees Charles on their boat, which sure they have a boat. He works at a, he's a Jaguar dealer. So she gets the great idea that she's going to drive Janie's house. Condominium. Which is like a, like a paddle steamboat. That's I don't know a steamboat, but you know, it's got the huge paddle up on the back. Yeah. That's the, it's like the a river boat. boat. It's a river condominium. <laughs> like a, like yeah. a down south Like casino. Mississippi. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like there's a gambling parlor. And <laughs> um, this was the only point in the movie where I felt like, what are you doing? And it didn't yeah. match her character because right. That's this wildly. was her acting out. This was not Fred. Right. Yeah, it was a really poor Fred's poor like, oh, we're, we're, we're commandeering this? Oh, okay. Can I touch that button? No. What about this button? Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I laughed at that moment. But I can't touch anything. No. Okay. Yeah, sure, sure. I'll just touch that one. No, 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 no. Okay, I won't touch that one. I'll touch that one. Nothing. It's okay. I'm the pilot who doesn't touch anything. That's right. Except this one. Whoa! She was piloting the boat fine until Fred came in. Or she wasn't, and Fred (laughs) breaking air quotes the boat was her just not knowing how to drive. That is true. I doubt she would have gone down and started smacking the engine if it was yeah. fine or fred knew that she was going to end up destroying the boat so he did it first so she can blame him and not herself he did it for fred her is, fred is really just selfless he really fell on his sword on this one which really is just then he's full of himself because he is her <laughs> this I, I laughed when like she's looking i don't know if she's looking through binoculars or something she's looking around and his face pops up and he's like like i don't know that made me laugh <laughs> he morphs into his costume becomes you know he has the tri-corner hat he looks like he's a sailor fred touches something he's not supposed to he goes down to the engine pretty much literally hits it with a wrench and breaks everything and then we're just treated to the boat sinking like cut to the boat is finished sinking man that's like a cringy moment because in real life you'd be like man i have just completely fucked my friend's life <laughs> You know, Carrie Fisher reacts so calmly compared to what, like, ugh, oh, my car got another flat tire. Like, that's that's yeah. the same vibe. Either she's a really good lawyer 
Or it's a case of, like the mother, they have just grown so used to... <laughs> I'm sorry, you coming into my house things. and tracking dog shit all over it, it, intentional or not, does not hold the same candle as you totaling my car or, you know, let's just combine the two and totaling my car that happens to be my house. Yeah. Like, that's just... I would say her reaction was closer to, like, oh, I crashed your car. Like, that that you can come back from that, you know? Um, but your house, just essentially everything... She says, everything I own was on that boat. And, yeah, she says it with... <laughs> she says it with, like it was a minor inconvenience. Oh, I have to buy was still sleeping stuff. upstairs. <laughs> <laughs> he just shit in the corner too. <laughs> yeah, so Elizabeth, this scene that Nick is we're talking about, she comes to the courthouse. She pulls Cheney out of her meeting where Murray is. We realize they work together, and tells her all this. And why I can't tell if she's just being a good friend at first, but Cheney is just like. She's almost like mad at Fred, like she believes that he's a real person, like that, that or that he's a real. He's really did all this. I was surprised on how much she kind of just went along with it. And yeah, I was like, it. "Wow, what a friend!" He's just sitting in your chair. Do you see him? No, but that won't stop me from killing the little bastard. Maybe she was having a psychotic break. <laughs> I don't think that was acting. <laughs> so I sank your house. So Fred shows up here. He's revealed to be sitting in Janie's chair next to Murray when Janie comes out to talk to Elizabeth. And Elizabeth points him out and Janie's like, oh, he's right there, right next to Murray. So Janie goes in and... Excuse me, gentlemen. Hello, sweetheart. Aren't you a cute little thing? She's kind of looking towards his crotch and yeah. <laughs> I don't know, the way the way that Fred is kind of looking around, like he's kind of amused that it looks like she's looking at his dick and talking to it. But she drags the chair out. Like, she interrupts this meeting where, like, it's, this is, like, her professional life. She just interrupts this meeting, pulls the chair out with Fred on it. To her, it's empty, but we see Fred is there. Fred stands up, but she goes through the motions of grabbing him, throwing him on the floor. Uh, 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 there's nobody there. It's because he's invisible, idiot! Die! You're a dead little man! Back for the boat! Meanwhile, everyone yeah. from that conference is staring through the glass windows. <laughs> yeah, she's just. Uh, or, uh, she, I guess she's billable could, hours. This could be her just. Maybe this is her manifesting her reaction to her learning that her house just got destroyed, but now her professional life. I don't know how she can recover from that because she also blurts out that. And thanks for ruining the one stoop I get a month when Murray's wife is out of town! Seemingly could have like ruined her. Perf- professional career but we don't hear anything about her job from after this scene so who knows actually i don't think we hear anything from her after this scene we do we get we get we do get one follow-up but it's not about it's about the boathouse but not about her uh, Mm. job but that's later on also all of these are happening at a part in my notes where i just say other scenes happen i guess (laughs) (laughs) so the there's a gap before I finally kind of recollected myself and got back to it. <laughs> I've got you covered because I have to because I'm guiding this movie. Sorry, if listener, if you can hear a baby screaming. That's my newly born daughter. And she will cry when she wants to. This is her party. But maybe you can't hear it and I'll cut this out. But, you know, deal with it. We cut to lunch with Mickey. I don't even know when this lunch date was made. Uh, and this is... I think the best scene in the movie for me. I don't know how you guys felt about this, but I I, just, I think I just really liked Phoebe Cates' physical comedy skills here. Yeah, this was the scenes where she finally acted out what was happening instead of just it being um, Fred doing all the damage. Right. She's sitting there with Mickey. Uh, Fred shows up. We're seeing what it looks like to have Fred talk to her, but having nobody be there but she's reacting and then physically fred they go to toast and she's holding her glass of water and fred is gripping it and trying to like move it all around and then you know you cut and he it shows you the perspective of fred not being there and her her arm is just shaking the water is spilling (laughs) everywhere and 
and she's that's all that's all Phoebe Cates, and I I don't know she that made me laugh because her her acting I think and that was pretty good. It I did laugh when at, at, like after her hand is shaking, she's still talking to him <laughs> and slowly just pouring the glass of water on <laughs> yeah. her lap, yeah. <laughs> but smiling through it and trying to act like yeah. this is completely normal. Again, we see it without Fred there, but he's manipulating her hands like raising her hands up in the air like randomly she's yeah and she pulls it's like up. that scene in invisible man which one when she reaches out and then he puts a knife in her hand you remember that scene invisible Sorry. man no don't want like, to ruin it for people like the black and white universal invisible man no the new one a new one circa 2019 oh with elizabeth moss yeah she's at dinner and then like he the invisible force holds her hand open, puts a knife in it, and then cuts the other person's throat. Oh, God. I don't remember that. Yeah, that happens in the scene, and Mickey's sprays yeah. blood everywhere. And then he gets over it. Because <laughs> that's it's Mickey. Phoebe Cates. That's <laughs> yeah. Mickey. He simps for, for Phoebe Cates. <laughs> <laughs> um. That short Bob. Yeah, so this whole scene is just her. It's... A good comedy bit, I feel, of Fred just like throwing silverware, throwing her food, and she's trying to remain normal. But the the funny thing is, is that Mickey, he's yeah, he, he wants. You could tell he wants to date her so bad. He's like, this is, I'm gonna do this too. I wish I was as bold as you to just do weird shit. Ends up throwing <laughs> spaghetti at the table across from him. And One of these people has an excuse, <laughs> right? <laughs> Yeah, like, uh, he takes to another level, just like, it's almost like he takes the attention away from her. Maybe that was his intention, like, being that much of a good guy, but I love the chef that comes by. He's like, you don't throw spaghetti in my restaurant. Mickey is accosted. I don't know why. I guess he just gets detained probably by security or whatever. So she just kind of, like, leaves the restaurant. Then at, Yeah, then at one point, he's, um, they're, like, taking them away. And then he's like, oh, I have to go back in or something. And he, like, dips oh. under everybody and runs back into the <laughs> restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he goes back in for her. She left something, I think, maybe. I think so, yeah. Yeah. What if the rest of the movie is we only see Mickey in the background escalating things further and further of like <laughs> this kicked off something in his head. End of the every, movie, he's like cars overturned on fire. I was going to say every every so often you see on TV it's like man on the freeway <laughs> burning couches. <laughs> Throwing cinder blocks from overpass. <laughs> it just becomes like a super villain. You're right. This is fun. He's like the joke. He becomes the Joker. He has no motive. He's just like this is uh, the chaos is my motive. <laughs> um, <laughs> so that scene ends. She's walking around the mall. I guess they're having like dinner in a restaurant connected to a shopping mall. She comes across a little eating area a cafe that has a a little musical performance going on with piano and violin. I hated this part. <laughs> I think this was the worst part of the whole movie for me. What, you hated it? Like, Mm -hmm. what did you hate? (laughs) Because I knew where it was going. And the second her attention was drawn to the musicians on the stage and seeing Fred there, I knew, like, she's going to assault them. And it's not going to be Fred. It's obviously going to be, like, the piano guy or the cellist or whoever is going to be, like, the target. In this case, is the violin player. Yeah, Fred appeared as the violinist and was playing horribly. And she goes up and starts hitting him with her purse. And you cut. It's actually the violin player just standing there taking it. Like, Um, what did Fred think was going to happen by pulling that old switcheroo? Like, he knew it was going to be bad. He's here to help her. Nothing is somehow everything he does even it's horrible is supposed to help her right yeah Um, good thing that that person didn't (laughs) sue or press charges and it was just a case of like my mother wrote you a check you're all set and not oh yeah you uh you attacked me and destroyed my property in a public (laughs) setting she ends up with priors it's on her record can't get a job yeah i cringe a little bit when it cuts and you and it's like she's actually hitting the the violin guy. <laughs> well, I like how the mother is like, Play such an expensive violin in a shopping mall? 
<laughs> she chastises him. He looks guilty for having been assaulted. Like she makes him feel bad. <laughs> well, all of it is not very food court music. I don't remember the music. It was just classical. The fact that there's a live band playing for the food court <laughs> at a mall. It's a good mall. I don't think I'm going to like get a slice at Sabaro and sit down for like Tchaikovsky. <laughs> Not with that attitude. And now Mozart's spring. Enjoy Golden Dragon. Trying to trying to bring some culture to the to the people. <laughs> it was ninety one. There was no culture in the people. <laughs> the culture was snap bracelets. <laughs> Tamagotchi. Not yet. We had pogs back then. <laughs> so from here, mother takes Elizabeth to the doctor. I guess it's a psychiatrist. We don't, I don't know if it was ever expressly stated. Yeah. But he has the worst ADR of any act, anything I've ever seen. I don't know if the guy's oh, yeah, voice. Oh, that was bad. <laughs> I don't know if the guy's original voice is like, they didn't like what it, how he sounded, but it's obviously a different person doing his lines. It just it looks bad. It sounds bad too, but they're in the waiting room with all the other kids, which I don't think you would ever actually see that at any. I don't know. That seemed it's that was an odd. <laughs> We're all waiting for psychiatry. <laughs> it's weird that they would book us all for the same time slot. <laughs> Maybe some of us are early. Don't these usually last an hour? And there's like five of us here <laughs> waiting for the one doctor. So yeah, there's a bunch of other kids that also have imaginary friends. And it is a, I think, a creative scene because it's like all these imaginary friends know each other because presumably there's an imaginary friend void somewhere where they all go, where they all are from. <laughs> I thought they could have been, I know they're supposed to be children's imaginary friends, but they were like not very inventive or like interesting. They were just like weird. Ba- ba- yeah, bargain bin <laughs> imaginary friends like yeah, velcro, like velcro head, head. <laughs> Who this just play, sticks, it seemed like a just, nightmare this room <laughs> <laughs> all these imaginary friends realize they're there together and they're just palling around meanwhile it shows all the other kids perspective they can only see their imaginary friends <laughs> which is bonkers to think that this kid like how you have an imaginary friend and now for some reason you only see your imaginary friend freaking out. <laughs> I oh, would be your imaginary terrified friend as has a child. imaginary friends. So if you had to choose between any of the imaginary friends here, which one would have been yours? Oh shit. Personally mine mine would have been the red one with like the hair and the cape. That's yes. He would yeah. have been mine. Not the like greasy one. Well, the fact that like, Fred seemed he like, like he the... hated the guy in the, the cape means that I would probably like the guy in the cape. <laughs> what were they? I'm just glancing back. Yeah, red, red-haired red cape guy, Velcro head, and then, oh yeah, the guy all in, in the running suit with like lightning on the side of his head with a balloon. Um, and then what's-her-name shows up? They're the woman. Bambi Pambi. Pambi Pambi. I can't really even describe this scene. They're just... The real purpose of it is for them to deliver to Fred the information that don't let Elizabeth take the green pills that the doctor's going to give him. <laughs> Which is so sinister that it's like the other imaginary friends are like, you have to stop your child from taking their meds. <laughs> Which one is your child? Oh, it's the uh, 26-year-old one over there. <laughs> right. The I guess one with the short bob. <laughs> Fucking Velcro head. Like, what a so. <laughs> so we see head. at the end of the movie that Fred moves on to another child. Right. So do they end? Is this like a guardian angel situation of like they get assigned based on they go to some hub somewhere? And if that's the case, then the entirety of the time where she didn't have Fred in her life from childhood and he's been trapped in that box. So that just means that some other child didn't have their imaginary friend during all this? He just didn't report to work? I mean, like most of us, I assume, didn't have an imaginary friend, so... Are you just saying the one that needed one didn't have his, and now he's messed up? Yeah, because there... I mean, it's like a teacher shortage. (laughs) Nobody wants to take the job. (laughs) No, right. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that could be the case. 
Also explains why they would know each other if there was a hub where they wait for their next assignment. And that kid was Mickey. <laughs> you guys ever watch the show? Um, fuck, I don't actually even remember the name of it. Foster's it's on Home Net- for Imaginary Friends. It's on Netflix, and it's um, it's like related to Big Mouth. So in Big Mouth, it um, follows like you know like oh, prepubescent teens. Yeah, and like the, it follows the, the monsters, monsters that show. Yeah. Okay. And then this is like a level up above that where all of those types of monsters report at this like corporate office (laughs) and it follows them around there. So like the hormone monsters have to deal with like, you know, the, the like Cupid fairy people that fall in love with stuff and it's all like its own universe. And it's the same hormone monster from Big Mouth in that one. It'd be funny if the same thing happened here. Where, like, these uh, imaginary friends met up with, like, the monsters from Little Monsters and, like, all the imaginary shit that keeps going around. That would be funny and cool if that were to actually be the case. Yeah, it's interesting. I never thought this movie, it's, like, it, it sets up a possible world that, I don't, you could have, like, a sequel that completely goes in a different direction and just can, about, is about imaginary friends and not about self-worth. <laughs> The Fred gets assigned to somebody else, and then the kid ends up dying, and then he doesn't right. have somebody to be assigned to. And if you don't have a kid, you can't exist. He's accused of killing the kid, and he has to go to like imaginary friend court. Yeah, or he's and on he the needs run. to find a new kid, otherwise he'll disappear. Right. And he runs at the end. Fred did kill the kid, and like he was the villain the whole time. <laughs> so yeah, the 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 weird friends warn him about don't let Elizabeth take the pills because they're going to disappear. So mom takes her home where she reveals that she's hired a linebacker of a nurse to look after her. (laughs) Um, She's the meanest looking nurse I've ever seen. I thought she was going to... Nurse Ratchet if she was built as a brick shit house. (laughs) (laughs) I thought she was going to put a wooden block between her ankles and hit him with a sledgehammer. (laughs) That's the vibe I was getting there. I heard you were out of bed again, Lizzie. (laughs) Let's make sure that doesn't happen anymore. <laughs> um, yeah, so she's got this nurse on hand, just essentially keeping her from escaping. That's what it ultimately is. Is uh, She's a bouncer to keep her in the house. <laughs> Mickey randomly shows up with Elizabeth's dress, a dress for her for some reason. Do well, we, does that she, ever explain? She can't escape. Because the nurse catches her. Right. And they send her back into the house. So she ends up smashing a window with the phone to escape out through there. And oh, Mickey's yeah. Already I mean, I know that And the part. tray just standing there. <laughs> yeah. It's just like he already has her dress and he's just standing in her tree. Yeah. Well, Mickey comes to the front door and mom shuts her down like, you're not seeing my daughter. And then he just like sits on the, the porch out front like, oh, this is okay. I'll just hang out here. I just don't know why he has her dress. We realize later that it's a dress for her. I don't know if that was ever talked about. It's kind of I odd. think it's a deleted scene that wasn't uh, kept. You're probably right. It was random on how, like, why is he here? Why are they going to a party? Yeah. Did I not pay attention for, like, two seconds and that's when they explained <laughs> it? Probably all of the above. Maybe he just got it for her as a gift. I, can't, I don't think all three of us could have missed it, so I think it's just a, a plot hole. So Phoebe is kind of like... Not catatonic, but she's like, <laughs> my life, you know, like she's kind of thinking about her situation. Then we're treated to a, the, I think it's the final flashback. Mom is giving her a haircut. I thought oh, she's fixing, I think, because Elizabeth cut her hair. It was kind of, yeah. The whole cutting her hair was a callback to something that actually happened in her childhood. Her mom is fixing her hair. Lots of mommy issues are revealed. <laughs> Nigel, the dad, is here, like, Obviously, they, they're disagreeing on how the mom's reaction to her behavior. Elizabeth, you've made a mess of your beautiful hair. The time has come when we don't want to hear the words drop dead Fred ever again. Don't you agree, Nigel? About what? This drop dead Fred business. She leaves the room. Dad leaves the room. Fred appears and he's like, it's mud pie time. <laughs> Well, before before Fred um, comes back, so when the mother and the father are still in the room, um, she ends up saying like, Daddy, how about we throw Mommy 
out the window. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and the boy's just like, uh, what? And the father just like, oh, and is playing with her and lifts her up. And You shouldn't say things like that about your mother. She might cut your head off. <laughs> he was not helping. Yeah, he wasn't. I think both of these people don't really know how to raise a child. So Fred appears. The only thing that can save me is a mud pie. Yeah! Come on! He just instantly lets fuck shit up. So he brings in a boulder-sized amount of mud and just throws it in the... Uh, Elizabeth gets out to find China, puts it on the table. Fred dumps it down in and they're like pouring cornflakes on it. They just essentially just make a mess of everything. The mom comes in, has a natural reaction, which I think is might be her most appropriate reaction to something going on. <gasps> She, she has a great mom line here. She's She sees the destruction. She's like, or before this even, sorry. Before she leaves the room, she says, Sometimes I think I don't love you as much as I used to. It's like, oh, Jesus. <laughs> that's, that's the chicken and the egg part. Because it's just, they have such a bad relationship. I don't know which one might have started even first. Even so, that's on the mom to contain that kind of comment. And be like, don't say that to your daughter. <laughs> Yeah, and even then, like, even if they were, like, complete shitheads up to the, like, six years old, she got rid of the the guy at that, like, that final scene. So, from that point forward, she was without him. So, why did you still treat her like shit right. this whole time? Well, do we know after that point she treated her terribly? Yes. Do you see how she acts to her? And the things that she yeah. says, like the tone of several things, like I, I I didn't write it down because it's just like that gets under my skin and it got me fucking aggravated with how her mother spoke to her over certain things that That's she true. was doing. It was definitely a caustic relationship that her mother treated her like shit after the fact into yep. adulthood. He's right. Plus, you can tell she, her mom comes from money and she's letting her drive around in like this shit car. Well, she does also pay off somebody so she doesn't get in trouble with the police. So she doesn't not care about her. She's still her daughter, but she's just that like, yeah, I'm going to help you, but I'm going to make your life miserable because of it. Almost like evil stepmother vibes. Yeah, it is, it is evil stepmothery. I think she was a terror as a child and she owes her mother those years back. I mean, I guess everything I think comes out. A, Tim, I, I think you need to rewatch it. Because when you spaced <laughs> out, I think that's no, the, you I missed don't. on the critical scenes here. <laughs> you need a reanalysis. I think perhaps you need the screen refresh. You'd have to pay Tim at least $400 to watch this movie again. I mean, $400 in 90 minutes is a pretty good rate. So I think that's... I'd assume you'd do it for that much money. <laughs> If you gave me cash today, yes, I would probably sit down and rewatch this for that. <laughs> um, by the end of the movie, the mother just pretty much comes clean. Is like, yeah, that she's hasn't been in I'm it. Sorry for killing your beginning. father. <laughs> but mom comes in. This is where she takes Fred. For I mean, Fred has gone back willingly to his. I guess his home is the Jack in the Box. You've been playing with him, haven't you? Where is he? Don't, don't take him away from me! Oh, so that must make you cry, huh? Well, don't, now I know what to do. Give me a... Don't! Don't take him away from me! And this is where Nigel the Tad has had the last straw. Like, I don't agree with getting rid of this imaginary friend. Nigel, do it. No, I won't. I don't want anything to do with it. It's not right. All right, I'll do it. I'm not going to stand around here and watch you treat our daughter like that. <laughs> she has a really biting line, Bye. and he doesn't... <laughs> it's not right. What would you know about raising a child? Apparently nothing. And he doesn't really have a comeback, so... Nigel goes to get a pack of cigarettes, as you do. 
back in the UK. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it's how her dad left the same day that Fred got put away. She goes over and starts cleaning up her mess immediately after. So it's like, oh, I guess she's reformed now. For I mean, reformed, quote unquote. But then the mother won't know if it's the jack in the box that fixed this or if it's the fact that the father left that fixed mm. this. Nigel was the one causing these problems. So many cans full of worms about to be opened. All these questions. So Elizabeth writes a goodbye letter to Fred. Dear Drop Dead Fred, you were my only friend, but she took you away from me. I know I'll see you again. Someday. If you come back, I promise we'll run away together. See that? Promise. Fred is showing it to Elizabeth in the present day. It's like like it's kid writing. It's not yeah. even real English. And <laughs> I love how he's funny. rereading it to her later. <laughs> he points <laughs> like, out, look, it says right there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was good. She seems like she, even though Fred's supposed to be helping her, it seems like she fully regresses in that moment. All right, Fred, you're back. Let's do things your way. Let's go. Let's go I think to that's the... referred to as the mind break. The mind break. Because she just stops resisting at that point. And yeah. just like, you're right, Fred. Yeah, <laughs> let's do it. So they realize they can't go out the front door because of jacked ratchet. Jacked ratchet. <laughs> jacked <laughs> ratchet. <laughs> So they come back upstairs to head out the front door or something. Wait, wow. I, head upstairs for the front door? Yeah. What Just kind forget of Escher house is this? <laughs> they, so they go back upstairs and try to break out of the window. I, I don't know why Fred can't destroy it with his head. It's just a stronger window, I guess. But Elizabeth grabs a telephone and smashes it. I love those breaking noises. Let's go. <laughs> I should take a bat to that nurse's legs. <laughs> Don't you just love those breaky noises, Fred? <laughs> it's fucking sinister. <laughs> Remember Mickey came to give her dress to her for some reason? He's been hanging out on the porch. And they both had the same idea to use the tree to get to the second... To, to get out. Or he was trying to get to the second floor with her dress. They break the window and they're descending down the tree. And they run into it. They meet cute on the tree. Hey, door to window service. <laughs> I brought you a dress, madam. Mickey. Can you give me a lift? Absolutely. Come on. Mickey. The Mickey is suffers from like ultimate friend zone. <laughs> um... <laughs> Mickey gives her a ride to the wine party from that one sheet poster earlier they found earlier to win back Charles because that's how she can be happy. She asks, like he comes here, brings her the dress, and then it's, can you give me a ride so I can try to win back my ex-husband? And then he even does that whole thing of like, you know, I saw you for the last time when I was getting that car and I was just so sad that I'll never get to play with you again. And <laughs> sometimes life finds a way and it's like, thanks for dropping me off. <laughs> Bye. Big gulps, huh? Well, see you later. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. They linger on Mickey too. Like He's like, ah, man. You know, you can tell he's like, I'm trying to shoot my shot. I mean, he matches her her crazy, so. <laughs> sure. He's emboldened by her crazy. I think the relationship will fall apart when he realizes, oh, you're not crazy anymore. No, or it's going to ramp don't... up into like a natural born killer scenario. <laughs> They're going to just badlands their way through uh, whatever country they're in. <laughs> Sitting there with her during that dinner scene with her going like, so many red flags being thrown about left and right. I, I'm surprised that he's still he's still in it. He's like, I want more, please. I'm like, all right, man, good for you. Yeah, I mean, he was, he, like I said, he's emboldened by her, her acting out choices. So I guess they're perfect for each other. We'll never know until the sequel is made. This is the sequel we've been waiting, we've been wanting, like that 30-year sequel that they do, they do nowadays. 
all those legacy sequels where it's going to be called Drop Dead Fred, but no number <laughs> two to it. It's just going to be like Drop Dead Fred and then in parentheses 2023 and you're going to be like, oh. Or Drop Dead Frederick. It's like slightly different. It's still confusing. <laughs> Please. Drop Dead Fred was my father. <laughs> um, so they get to this wine party, which is being waited on by Toga models. Um, Fred is rocking that Jimmy Neutron here. <laughs> yeah, Fred actually looks kind of funny here. <laughs> With Jimmy, yeah, it's pretty. It's literally Jimmy Neutron, tall, hair with a curl on top, um, and his green tuxedo with tails. Um, they walk by. There's like a male model, like ripped in a toga, this like is the only, This is the main laugh that it got out of me in this movie. <laughs> well, I think it's funny. <laughs> For me, it's funny. Be so, Fred. They walk by. Fred grabs the brooch or clip, whatever, holding his toga on. It drops, so he's naked, and he crouches down, and he just immediately says, "Like, please, somebody pick up my toga." Please, oh, can please someone grab a hold of this? <laughs> <laughs> and all the guests he's, just start laughing well, at him. Yeah, he's just like, oh, "Can somebody hold these?" <laughs> so I can. He's cover like still up holding the plates of hors d'oeuvres, yeah. just like crouching on the ground. <laughs> Guests just laugh at him. No, but like one other waiter moves to help him, and everybody just laughs. Just like what a yeah, bunch of gotta, shitty people. They got to laugh out of me, and it's just the audacity too of Fred doing it. So that's the thing. <laughs> yeah. That's the thing because it's like, is that Phoebe Cates that, doing it? Yeah, or is it really I mean, Fred? And I don't it's just know. like some drops. I really wish to have seen like Phoebe Cates being the one to have uh, pulling the guys. <laughs> just de toga this guy. Yeah, yeah. It begs the question: like, how much of this is? I imagine like, is Fred like an it follows kind of invisible demon <laughs> that only one person can see? Oh, like, that he moves on to the next person <laughs> after they have. No, yeah. never mind. <laughs> right. Um, <laughs> but Charles he, starts seeing him. Is he? Oh my god! <laughs> is he physically manipulating, or is it just Phoebe imagining it? doing it herself but fred spots uh, a woman in a short dress slides over <laughs> as you do uh, on his back looks up notice she's not, she's not wearing underwear and we're treated to one of well not the worst vfx shot in the movie but one of the one of the worst <laughs> where his eyes bulge out of his head like looking at her privates it was like uh, the mask yeah yeah <laughs> yeah but like just a, really like a prelude <laughs> didn't realize bridget fonda is in this yeah like she's minute. she's uncredited which I, which I guess was a wise choice uh, apparently it's a she's a friend of phoebe case and she's like i don't know why if she needed her to do this but she's like hey do you want a cameo annabella annabella uncredited so she goes to stop fred from looking up her dress uh, we turn around, turns around and we realize it's Bridget Fonda. I don't know how, I don't know what she was doing at the time. She must have been in some stuff. I'd imagine. I mean, by, she didn't do then. Kiss of the Dragon for another 10 years. Hmm. I think she was in other stuff too. She must have been in other <laughs> stuff. She's a Fonda. Yeah. Charles, Tim Matheson comes over and uh, realizes it's Elizabeth standing there. She's completely made over from how she looked at the last time he saw her. He suddenly remembers, oh, that's right, she's a smoke show and <laughs> leaves Annabella. <laughs> Elizabeth? My God. Elizabeth leaves embarrassed because Fred is like moving her all around and she leaves the party embarrassed thinking she kind of messed it up with Charles. So back at the apartment, she had showered, she's getting ready for bed, she thinks she blew it. Charles comes in, smitten with her, Saying she looked good, because that's all he cares about, really. Takes her to bed. They Maybe they do the dirty sex deed. I don't know. And it depowers Fred. (laughs) (laughs) Um, It cuts to them later. They hear a noise. What was that? Ah, it's Fred. Fred? What did you do, give this Fred a key? Hey, Fred, I'm home now. It's Charles, Lizzie's husband. Is he the violent type? Only with me. Jesus. Grabs a cast iron pot. 
swings it at the intruder, and actually he's knocked out, jacked ratchet. Polly, hi. What did you do? <laughs> no harm, no foul. They leave. Charles assures her he's got it. Like everything's good now. Uh, so they they have dinner. He she makes a really nice dinner for Charles. It's romantic. Turns out to be mud pie, which is kind of a surprise because we've up until this point we've kind of seen it every antic that has gone on uh but this is just a turn it's just like all of a sudden she's fred has stepped in and made mud pie with her i guess and she's at, at this it. point when the the nurse comes back and polly comes back don't they give her the pills oh yeah right um, and kind of inform charles of like she should be taking these or something yeah they get the green so now pills. it's like fred's just breaking through her psyche in moments <laughs> <laughs> right she doesn't even know it like a memento situation she's just all of a sudden waking back up <laughs> oh yeah sorry i skipped ahead on that mud pie bit um you can keep skipping <laughs> i should <laughs> uh i do want to say so we we get a scene where we're with janie janie is power walking carrie fisher oh yes <laughs> i love this bit elizabeth's trying to keep up and they're just she's saying how she's back with charles and it just like randomly delivering information that the houseboat it's a river condominium insurance paid off apparently very well in so many zeros as Janie says have you ever seen so many zeros outside of the national debt Janie who would have thought that barge was worth this much not a barge it's a river condominium and I had no idea they were worth that much until mine finally sank oh is this not a total groove You've got Charles back, and I have all those lovely round zeros. Our lives have worked out. Thank you, Drop Dead Fred! <laughs> that scene just kind of inserted, inserted to show that information, I guess. it doesn't. Nothing really comes out of that. Well, they had Carrie Fisher for three days. I just love seeing Carrie Fisher, like, power walking with a cigarette. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she takes a deep, a deep drag off of it. <laughs> She's strutting next to the river. Then we come back after that scene, and it's Mud Pie. They're having it to dinner... Charles is like, it's either Fred or me. Like, stop making mud pie, please. <laughs> he goes... Not unreasonable in that regard. <laughs> he goes off into the next room. She's like, oh, I'll make it better. I'll make a salad. While she's making a salad, Charles is talking to Annabelle. And Fred has showed up at this point. She's <laughs> trying doll. to get... She's try, wait, what? <laughs> the doll? <laughs> Did I say Annabelle? Oh, wait. It is Annabelle. <laughs> Annabella. Annabella. <laughs> Fred Peak City. She's just <laughs> holding the doll from the Conjuring universe. You guys are really ahead of your time. Yeah, we both have friends now. I mean, the doll existed at that point, but it was not a uh, franchise. Um, Fred, you know, pops up while they're alone, while she's making a salad, and she tries to get rid of him with the pills, and he's getting sickly, weaker. It's kind of established earlier that she's allergic to this whatever kind of flower. Well, I don't, I don't know why it's in the fucking apartment, but <laughs> she sneezes. He flings away over and overhears. Their apartment like has no. It's like one of those no ceiling, it's got high no, ceilings, but it has like cubicle perforations. Yeah. It's not con- the walls not connected to the ceiling. Correct. Yeah, it's like they live in a set. Yeah, it's like. Like, I know that kind of place exists, but it is very set set feeling. He overhears <laughs> Charles talking to Annabella. Of course I still love you, Annabella. Hey, I'm your fella, Annabella. He has, like, the worst game imaginable. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what he, how he does what he does. I guess money. Money. Um, yeah. And I'll get you a Jaguar. Elizabeth realizes Charles is talking to, still talking to Annabella behind his back. And she doesn't, her life, she just finally realizes Charles is a scumbag. Is not what he's cracked up to yeah. be. About time. About damn time. It's about time. Phoebe falls onto dying, drop dead Fritz, invisible body. And I don't know what, that was a weird effect because she falls on top of him i thought they like merged yeah i thought, I thought they I, were going i to thought also. she was gonna stand up and just like she was fred at that point it was gonna start doing <laughs> shit 
I finally claimed a human host. <laughs> I think they technically did merge, though. Charles because... Lee Ray showed me this. <laughs> <laughs> Give me the power, I beg of you. <laughs> Because when they wake, good. when when she wakes up, they're they're definitely merged at that point, but it went in that different direction at first. Because I it I thought they were just going to merge, but then she passes out and she goes into that like deep fugue state <laughs> of like that weird nightmare dream. Yeah, the good like hell dimension where she has to fight metaphors. <laughs> <laughs> um, they go to. A dream version of her mother's house. I mean, she goes in the house. Fred joins her. Charles shows up. Dream Charles. She yanks the hood ornament off the jaguar, and he floats around, or rather, p- pitters out like a balloon, losing its air around the room. So I guess you assume, okay, she's made that decision. It's like her. This is just like her steps of therapy, like happening in her mind. <laughs> But every other time she was imagining something, it was actually happening. (laughs) Does she all of a sudden wake back up and... Because it's not like a Jason, like a, a, what's his name, from American Psycho, where he imagines everything and it never actually happened. Yeah. She actually destroyed his Jaguar and it floated around like a balloon. Well, yeah, but I mean, I don't... I know, it's a bad joke. She comes back to her senses and she's just like, Standing over the body of Charles. Just a fire starter. <laughs> <laughs> she should have killed him. That would have been really interesting. No one would have missed Charles. So she gets over Charles, metaphorically and actually. And then she grows a tree in her living room for whatever reason. I, I, don't, that, I don't know why they threw that in there. Like, just go up the stairs and see your mom. Why do you have to imagine a tree to get to the second floor? Because she made like a tree and got the hell out of there. <laughs> <laughs> it's leave you idiot make like a tree and leave yeah she finds her mother on the second floor and it just takes telling her twice and yelling at her that she's not afraid of her anymore i'm not afraid of you ah! you cursed rat look what you've done i'm melting melting oh what a world what a world and then the final boss is f- dropped into fred <laughs> <laughs> She has With to... a unique exploit to uh, <laughs> to beat that fight. Just kiss me and say drop dead, Fred. That was fucking weird. Why did they have to do that? Fred says, like, you're done, like, you're good, you can leave now, but you have to go alone. I'm not coming with you. I'll be gone. And All right, now kiss me goodbye. Yeah, but it was... I would have even been okay if it was like a kiss on the cheek. Yeah. Because that's like a friend kiss. But no, it was like a weirdly... It was like you linger just... A, you smack the With lips. tongue. It was a weird <laughs> choice. Draw me like one of your imaginary friend girls. <laughs> oh, like Namby Pampy? <laughs> no, old Velcro head. <laughs> Velcro head. Velcro head just... Let's not bring photo. rule 34 into this, please. <laughs> you guys are opening doors you don't want to see what's behind <laughs> so yeah what, what was it about gazing into the abyss or something like that or searching for monsters um yeah weird choice fred's like all right to leave just kiss me and say my name three times or whatever or say my name <laughs> the, the old reverse Beetlejuice. <laughs> <laughs> and so yeah so the weird kiss happens and then she wakes up. Fred is gone. She has a uh, new sense of life. She grabs the salad she was making for Charles. And he gets double whammed because you hear Annabella breaking up with him as she comes into the room. What do you mean? It's no good for you this way, Annabella. Wait. wait. What the hell was you, Annabella? And uh, she dumps the salad on Charles' head and then wipes her boogers on him. Which she finally does. We see Drop Dead Fred do it the entire movie. And it's this right. case, it's finally like, all right, she is the one doing it. She picks her nose, boogers him on the face, I think. Or maybe just the shirt. She done it on his face. Did she do it on his face? I don't know. Yeah. Uh, it was definitely the face. Definitely on the face. Um, she leaves Charles, goes to her mother's house. 
takes a shit on her front lawn. <laughs> She's just taking her life. <laughs> no, on her living room carpet. <laughs> <laughs> She's just taking her life right back. I didn't see no sign. <laughs> Yeah, she goes to mom's house to confront her. Tells her off. No, I don't know if she really tells her off, but... No, she told her off. Mom, I mean, yeah. Mom, this is where mom reveals the true colors, like... You have to stop treating me like I'm your enemy. Enemy? <laughs> Sometimes I wonder with you. I guess I made the same mistake a lot of people make. I had a child to save a marriage. Which is real fucked up to say. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. To your child, oh, no wait. less. I mean, you want to say that, fine, but you don't say it to your fucking kid. What else does she say? She There's a one-two punch here. Oh. Well, you made things worse. He left because of you. I missed those two lines. Yeah. That's <laughs> I, where I skipped, I that's, skipped once we got to the end. She came back from the hell dimension, and I just skipped it like the last <laughs> five seconds. That's where I was saying earlier when you're like, yeah, I get why the mom acts. You're defending her. It's like, uh. What a pile of shit. Call back to the opening scene. She kind of forgives her mom and tells her, like, get a friend if you don't want to be lonely. And then leaves. And she never saw her mother again. I talked to the writers and that's what they said. They said she never saw her mother again. Well, there's only like 30 seconds left of the movie. I mean, for all we know, it's, <laughs> it's definitely true for the rest of the movie. Yeah. <laughs> So we go from there to she's finally giving Mickey a chance. Uh, and it's all of a sudden revealed he has a daughter because they're out in front of his... Well, he mentioned it earlier. Yeah, in the beginning of the movie. He said he was just getting out of a relationship and he had a daughter. All of a sudden, it's with no hint at all, we see he has a daughter. <laughs> <laughs> Who's terrorizing her nanny. Yes. So they seem that like they're going to, they're meeting to go out or something because the babysitter is there. And the daughter comes running out. She's covered in mud or shit. Um, <laughs> and <laughs> claiming that. It was chocolate. It was chocolate. It was chocolate. chocolate. That's right. And then she's <laughs> licking her fingers. She's like, she's like, it's chocolate. Oh my God. I hope it is. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's all a ruse. Try it. Chocolate smells like my diapers. Um, I mean, she's too old for diapers. Which is but. weird, because I'm seven. <laughs> <laughs> I have that problem where I need diapers still. Uh, she claims that Drop Dead Fred told her to do it and helped her do terrorize the babysitter. So obviously that piques Elizabeth's interest, because like, oh, Fred's gone, but it seems like you have Fred now. <laughs> um, she's afflicted. They haven't found a vaccine for Fred yet. <laughs> <laughs> they did. They did have a vaccine for Fred. It's oh, true. It was the pills. The pills. <laughs> they only made him like anemic, though. It didn't like get rid of him completely. <laughs> she didn't take all the pills. She still had that one. That's right. Antibiotics That's won't right. kill everything in one go. You got to keep taking them. But Fred comes back and we realize Elizabeth can't see him anymore, but the little girl sees him and they pull one more prank where they almost kill the babysitter by stringing her up by her leg her ankle <laughs> from the from the arnold schwarzenegger school of capturing people <laughs> her insert, head hits a rock insert predator noises screaming like a bitch her head hits a rock yeah she swings <laughs> breaks her neck on the tree um fred runs drop dead fred and then she turns around and just like fred's gone he's gone <laughs> my last gift to you elizabeth <laughs> Phoebe, 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 <laughs> Phoebe. <Katie> Elizabeth, <laughs> Elizabeth sees the young daughter. I think her name's Natalie. Giving uh, an air pinky, a uh, pinky shake, a pinky shake, which Promise is what she used to swear. do with Fred. Pinky swear shake. It's more like a friend handshake because they're broing out. She's broing out with Drop Dead Fred. Elizabeth realizes that's how I used to bro out with Drop Dead Fred, so he must be real and he's right there. And she's her happy face it fades out, and there we go. Movie's I over. I thought I was going to do the freeze frame. I was just dis- disappointed. And then it plays that song. Which song? I, I turned it off. Freeze frame. <laughs> 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 
my last note is the film that ends and we can finally return to our lives. <laughs> finally. Finally. Drop Dead Fred. Yeah, this movie's not... I'm never going to watch it again. I think there are some entertaining parts. It, was, mo- yeah, moments it wasn't with that, Fred. It, it wasn't that bad. It really wasn't. I give it like a five yeah. and a half. It's not like you wouldn't have to pay me $400 to watch this again. But Yeah. Out of ten. Um, five and a half out of ten. It's like five and a half out of six. It's that's the best movie ever. No. Like I didn't enjoy it, but it didn't make me angry like it was yeah. wasting my time. Yeah, there I I thought there was funny moments, but those are few and far between, and the movie as a whole was like just, you know. They tried. So there's they don't that. make them like they used to, luckily. <laughs> Rest in peace. Rick Mayall, actually. He died the same year as Robin oh. Williams, coincidentally. Oh, I didn't know was that. was offered this. Yeah. I think he had declining health issues. I don't know if... I didn't look into it too much, but yeah, he passed away in 2014. Same year as Robin. <laughs> On that note, reach us at screen refresh at... <laughs> Freeze frame. <laughs> Any other comments on Drop Dead Fred? If we ever um, decide to all go to a convention as Screen Refresh, I will um, dress in Fred's <laughs> outfit from the wine tasting party. The wine tasting? Wait, yeah. I'll be I'll be Velcro. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be Phoebe hey, Cates. You're, oh, okay, I was gonna say you're Nambi Bambi. I'm sorry. I am not yeah. kissing you, Tim. Though, just keep that in mind. <laughs> it's the only way for you to get out of here, Nick. <laughs> Gonna be stuck here for a while. <laughs> so, thanks to everyone again for coming along for the adventure on Drop Dead Fred. As always, you can find us on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram at Screen Refresh, or email us your own movie memories at ScreenRefresh at gmail.com. If you like the show, help us out, please, and leave a rating and review on iTunes, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts to help others find us. We'll see you again soon for another Rule of Thirds episode. So, for Nick and Tim, this is Dean saying goodbye, snot faces. Welcome back to Screen Adventure Show. We revisit film shows and games. If you like the show, help us out, please, and leave a rating, review on iTunes, Spotify. Spoof. Jesus Christ. <laughs> I like how you Spur- you redid that line to add the desperation of Sp- please. <laughs> please. <laughs> Jesus God. God in heaven, leave us a review. <laughs> Lord above help us. <laughs> <laughs>